on people i think it's important we need to understand who people are i will teach us certain truths about people listen if you do not understand people you will be humiliated in your life and destiny a great man bishop oyedepo was asked and um they asked him the greatest asset in his life and he said people and he said the greatest problem in his life and he said people if you do not understand people you will never be able to fulfill your assignment if you do not understand people are we together now many leaders have failed because they do not understand people many pastors fathers mothers and we the young people Our inability to understand people has destroyed our lives in a very great way. So I'll be teaching us on that. Very powerful revelation. And then I'm going to be teaching us the second session on maintaining relationships. It's a powerful revelation. I'll be sharing with us a few keys that I have gleaned from the lives of absolutely phenomenal people. And some of the truths that the Lord has opened my eyes to. And this will include love relationships and relationships generally. And then number three, the Lord inspired me to answer certain questions. You know, God just put in my heart many questions that many people will be having. And I call that session, What Could Be Wrong? The third session, What Could Be Wrong? So I put a number of points. What could be wrong if nobody is asking you out? Are we together? What could be wrong if every relationship you lay your hands on does not work? What could be wrong if your marriage is on its way to being shattered? So I know that the Lord will bless us tonight in Jesus name. Let's start off media. I'll need you to help us on this. I want to share with you seven, I call them seven great scriptures that guide friendships and relationships because the foundation of understanding people, listen please, the foundation of friendships in the kingdom the foundation of relationships in the kingdom must be tied to an understanding that is revealed to us from God's word. Not just understanding that westernization has brought, not just understanding that our cultures have given to us. And there are seven great scriptures I have found in my own pursuit to understand people, understand friendships and relationships that I think will bless us. I won't dwell so much there because we have a lot and I really need us to finish this and do so in good time. So I'll give you the scripture media. When I give you the scripture, I will give you the next one so that you help us. And then I'll just explain the scripture. Every one of these scriptures give us guidelines. Scattered within them are principles that help us to excel in friendships, relationships, and to understand people. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we'll start off with Proverbs. Um, we we'll spend some time in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Proverbs 27, verse 17. While you're projecting that, our next scripture will be Proverbs 17, verse 17. So media, please help us. Proverbs 27, verse 17. And Proverbs 17, verse 17. Let's look at what it says. Everyone, please read. Proverbs 27, verse 17. One, two, read. The idea there is, is a comparison. As iron sharpened iron, so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. It gives you a God's idea on the kind 
of friendships you should be involved in are we together now it never says iron sharpened rubber is god speaking to us oh you are in for a, a shock tonight it never said iron sharpened wood that means true friendship must be based on the same material spiritual material psychological material are we together now it says as iron sharpened iron so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend meaning any kind of friendship i'm not just talking of love business friendship social friendship ministerial friendship that does not culminate in a mutual sharpening is a useless friendship as far as the kingdom is concerned this already is a big deliverance for many of us who are under so much pressure to be friends to and with everyone there are many kinds of friendships that don't build us it's taken from us it's stolen from us it's destroyed our lives you've been friends with someone for two years you cannot tell one spiritual advantage of his or her presence in your life are we together the person did not help you know god the person didn't help you discover purpose the person didn't even help you understand life that's a useless friend is god speaking to us tonight we grew up together so what when i came to zaria he was the first person i met so what it says as iron sharpened iron let me stop there next verse please 17 17 of proverbs then the next one will be proverbs 18 verse 24 i'll give you one ahead i just want to show us seven scriptures that have been the foundations of my understanding friendships and relationships this is a very interesting one let's read it together one to read A friend love it at how many times how many of your friends have done that the ones you call friends destiny friends the ones you claim you can die for the Bible says a friend a true friend can we have amplified please all through let's let's see how we can work with amplified all through if that is possible it says a friend love it at all times in other words a true friend any man you call your friend should be someone whose commitment to you is not dependent on circumstances i'm not talking of love relationships yet although that applies to it a friend loves at all times and is born as is a brother for adversity in other words friends part of the benefits of friends is to be sources of encouragement and lifting it's a terrible thing when a man is in the downside of his life and you look around there is nowhere to draw strength there are so many people in our lives today who are not friends we have entertained them we are wasting our time believing that they are friends let something bad happen to you you will never see any one of them yet some of us will not come to church because of those people yet some of us are now losing the good friends because we want to maintain those people as you are watching this i like you to begin to look at all the people in your spheres of influence who you call friends indeed whether or not they meet this criteria the bible says a brother is made for adversity is there someone in your life today who can see you in the prison and hear that godia was arrested and not just say i don't know the me too we're all workers it's just the church that that brought us together let me tell you something a true friend the bible says is made even for adversity where were job's business partners where were all his extended relatives none of them came around are we together now see this revelation will help you to know where to channel your energy and effort as far as building relationships are concerned because many of us feel that there are 
certain people you are so committed to and you will allow anything go bad to maintain relationships with them that is leading nowhere they are not friends they may not be enemies but they are surely not friends from the definition of bible are we together next scripture 18 verse 24 of proverbs then the next one will be proverbs 27 verse 6 these are seven scriptures or let's say eight that have really really changed my life proverbs 27 verse okay proverbs 18 verse 24 look at this hello celebrities social people those who rejoice around in the, everybody likes me i just have one kind of spirit listen to what the bible is saying are you ready one to read them read it read it i mean it's not me it's not my book it's in the bible one to read the man of many friends a friend of all the world will prove himself a bad friend but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother listen let me explain what that means for you if your life is not uncommon to drive certain kinds of people that means you don't have values and principles anybody sees the template of their life in you when a smoker sees you he sees something he sees a connection between him and you are we together when somebody who has no value for the things of you are like you know how a universal charger you they, uh, they, they call that, that you can put any kind of phone any kind of battery some of us are like that and we think because everybody is comfortable around us is a sign that we are good friends hear what the bible says you will eventually prove yourself to be a bad friend this is a friend that has no standards this is a personality that has no values meaning if you come to church you behave like a christian if you go to a place and they serve good they say, drop my own i mean i'm a social i'm okay i'm all right you go to where people are not serious christians you say what's there i mean don't feel bad about this it. all right let's 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 dance to it you seem like you are a friend of everybody the bible says it's a sign that something is wrong with your life because there are no standards something in your life must attract some people and drive other people Now, I don't mean to, I don't mean to insult uh, people and don't feel bad. Life is in levels. But there is a soap that I hear they bath with and wash with. Listen, listen. Now, don't feel, I said don't feel bad. God is taking everybody in levels. So don't feel offended if that's what you use. But I'm just trying to communicate something. You bath with, wash your clothes, try to clean out the stains, and then in your body too, I... I respect those who produce that soap if you are working with them please accept my kind apologies but i'm not a doctor but i can tell you this that soap will not give you the best in terms of quality are we together because you and your clothes are not the same are we together now yeah. some of us are like that see let me teach you something this night learn this if you are afraid of being controversial forget about being a leader it takes the courage of being controversial to become exceptional in life the reason why many of us find ourselves in useless friendships friendships that don't make sense is because you want to agree with everybody you you don't have the courage to look at people and say no 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 i love you but this understanding is not consistent with my ideologies so a roommate comes into your room she loves god you love her too but she says let me gist you what happened in judge this weekend hey just sit down and he said no problem and while you are just someone calls you and say you know that it's time for prayer band meeting and you say i'm coming you see so to you you don't see the difference you can enter and stretch for two hours shouting till you lose your voice and and just call somebody and say where are you now he says i'm in pz what was the name of that club come and tell me i don't know it <laughs> tj palace no now mate or something yes it's okay i know you used to go there no 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 for evangelism not for i know you go there for evangelism are we together
men with no standards men who are afraid of being controversial this these are the kinds of carelessness that stop certain people from being mightily used by god people cannot gist about you and say no 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 when it comes to this one just forget this person's standard is high and clear many of us are ashamed of defining our standards because we suspect it will rob us of certain people when you set that standard that lady you like will have to shift so you you patch it so that i can incorporate them look let me tell you the bible says a man who tries to be have you not heard that love with the father is enmity with the world you cannot gain everything you must choose one so that all-inclusive kind of friendship now please get my idea of friendship it doesn't mean you frown at others and laugh at others you i mean a friend is one who you allow to influence your life a friend is one who you are comfortable with his paradigm and his ideologies it doesn't mean that because you don't agree with someone you hate the person or you don't interact with the person no you are going to work if you're a worker here for instance you know that there are people in your office whose values are not consistent with yours even if they are christians you must have standards 27 verse 6 please proverbs then the next verse will be john 15 verse 13 are you getting blessed already john 27 verse i mean proverbs 27 verse 6 and then john 15 verse 13 now listen to what the bible says let's read one two read inside and outside one two read let me explain to you what that means the word wounds there means the discomfort from the correction of a friend are you getting what i'm saying the word wound there doesn't just mean after you fight with your friend it means faithful when it, when you meet a true friend one who loves you enough and he can tell you no 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 nurse i love you but the way you are going about this me and you know that this is not consistent with the word it will sting your ego the bible calls them wound but it says faithful are the wounds the pains that you sustain a friend is even ready to risk his friendship to make sure you excel in life that's a true friend in other words if after telling him the truth i lose out on the relationship no problem but at least i'm not talking about truth that is cynical i'm not talking about you coming to blast somebody and make him feel bad and say i'm like that i say everything raw raw does not mean stupid you have common sense to take it easy and say no 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 benga you love the lord but hi i saw a and b and c do you think it's all right if you do something about it it may stink his ego are we together now but he says faithful are the wounds of a friend notice what he called the kisses of an enemy you know what the, this, this these are very these are very powerful linguistic um, expressions you are entering the hole you say apostle of the most high you are the only one i mean look at what you are happening whereas i'm entering a ditch and you are there watching then the friend will kiss you and make you feel happy and go out and say i can tell you this guy is about to die but then he you immediately you step in in the middle of the command ah Sean, sir, god is lifting you the bible calls that the kisses some of you your cheeks is almost red with the kisses of enemies you are about to die nobody is telling you are doing something wrong you are in a relationship with five men and somebody comes and says man this girl you have sense so how are you doing it it's called the kisses of an enemy hiv is at the corner demons and spirits all kinds of instruments of ancestry at the corner it's called the kisses it was with a kiss judas used to let people know the person i kiss you would think is an instrument of love now in jewish days they didn't have a problem men kissing men it was not gay are we together it was an, it was a culture like they still do in britain you know kiss hands and all of that so the kisses of an enemy he said they are lavish generous 
your prayer life has died but he looks at you he's praying you are sleeping and he says we are rising that's the kisses of a friend you are not going anywhere but he's saying we are rising listen my father taught me something he said it's better to live with a wise enemy than a foolish friend when you live with a wise enemy you will have to be wiser to live with the person faithful are the wounds of a friend there are people I have challenged and corrected there are pastors that have had the privilege of closeness with them and i have told them you are a great man of god but i think you need to adjust here and here and here and they never come near me again i love them i pray for them there are pastors who i love sincerely but they will never come upon koinonia pulpit i love you too much to let them preach their vulnerability and their lack of standard is too bad there are some of you any man of god you see who comes to town just because he gave prophecy or he gave a revelation you say please i i think that you is that how much you love your people the kisses of an enemy you finish a ministration and someone comes to kneel and say abiodu in night somebody sent me a very interesting text you know what the person said he said he wanted to sow a seed into koinonia and he said man of god you are the only one who is raising disciples in nigeria he said other listen listen he said other men of god are what did he even say other men of god are just raising money that's the the, the, the kiss of an enemy how could such a man with the mighty work god is doing i mean men and women who have pledged their life in conveniencing themselves to see the kingdom advance some of you as as ridiculous and sarcastic as that statement is you like it you will embrace it and live in that deception how could you be so deceived like that it's called the kisses of an enemy you preach misquoted scriptures said a lot of things did a lot of things insulted people in the process allowed your carnality to override the stage and at the end of it your friend looks and says my brother what happened in today's meeting it's called the kisses of an enemy please listen to what i'm saying you must begin to respect people in your life who love you so much even with tears in their eyes they can tell you the truth they will guide you into the path of truth Now, I'm one person who by nature, surprisingly, did you know that all this shout shout you see ends on stage here? It's because of the apostolic anointing. As a person, I am incredibly soft. You will be amazed. Some people think I'm not emotional. I am. Are we together now? Go ahead. Look at you. are laughing. You can't believe it. You better believe it. Those who are close to me know. But I can laugh with you one moment. And while we're in the middle of a celebration you violate a kingdom principle and i look at you and i see how many other people will be misled from that paradigm you are going to receive it right there are we together you that change is important so if you love your destiny you will love me some of us hate anybody that can correct you now i don't mean in anger but somebody that has the courage to say my dear listen i think you need to work on this you you were calling and talking with someone you just told a lie you lied that you're in kaduna if you don't like him say you don't like him why say uh, officer i'm in kaduna and then you laugh and say hey, you are smart you are not smart it's called the kisses of an enemy and listen 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 a friend who partners with you to do evil will do evil against you pick the phone and lie for me the day it collides with her own personal interest, you'll be shocked. Next, we have a lot to do. I mean, this is an appetizer. We're about to lift up. John 15, verse 13. Then you'll go to Luke 6, 31. That's, that'll be the next scripture. I said 7, but I'll, I'll give you 8 technically. John 15, verse 13. Please write it and look up inside and outside. Those outside, are we together? Say Amen. God bless you. Okay, let's read. One to read. Uh huh.
the bible says the apex of friendship is sacrifice i'm giving you the interpretation of all this english the apex of true friendship is sacrifice how much you are willing to inconvenience yourself if need be to see the other party excel greater love had no man than this right it says that a man laid down sorry i'm, I'm not i'm it's from my mind that's why i'm not consistent with this but that's what king james says what i'm quoting greater love had no man than this he said that a man laid down his life for his friend listen anybody you claim to be a friend who cannot inconvenience himself or herself no matter how little for your welfare is a bad friend in fact it's an enemy you love yourself you are singing koinonia songs and all of a sudden your mother said please call me and you say please can you help me with your phone and say please i'm tired of this kind of thing i suffer and i walk i get recharge card they are prophesying on everybody in koinonia receive for yourself that's a bad friend you were rejoicing together but your mother sends an emergency call and the person cannot allow you to take advantage of 50 naira listen 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 be very careful greater love had no man than this you are coming down from a bike and you found out that ah you misplaced your wallet and your friend too came down from their bike and he's going he said i'm going he said sorry it looks like there's no more mm, no day just finish your thing there that's a bad friend you may laugh about it but the friend is already giving you signs i am so addicted to my interest if it means killing you i will that's the message this even is a deliverance for love relationships there are people who claim they're in love now is is valentine there are brothers who will give flimsy and stupid excuses on sunday you know why because they are not willing they don't want anything to touch them at all there are certain brothers you can buy me a shoe but you cannot buy a lady you claim you love so much you want to buy spend the rest of your life you are a liar you are a hypocrite you are not doing it because of honor greater love had no man than this look at your circle of friends look at what has left you to maintain that relationship and you will know if you are a good friend look at what has left them to maintain your relationship and you will know sister if you look at the life of this guy you are shouting around he, he, his, your laptop is his uh, um, picture everywhere right and you cannot see traces of genuine sacrifice not sacrifice that the validity period is on the altar sacrifice that is genuine see let me tell you one of the indices we're going to talk on that to know a very good guy is see how he responds to people who are not necessary in his life are we together look at the way the guy responds to people who he does not need in his life it tells you the true way here everybody looks nice if you can see what you will get from somebody the way he responds to a cleaner who cannot add anything to his life the way he responds to a restaurant waiter who cannot add anything so when he's looking at you and kneeling down say this way my dear think well see how he just insulted the waiter i say, sorry my temper i love you come and sit down he, what he's telling you is for as long as i need you you will get this response but the day i do not need you that's what you are going to get the default behavioral pattern of people is revealed when they are talking and interacting with people who do not add to their lives everybody can fake it when you are looking for attention or a gift but the way you respond to people who mean little to you is god blessing us 6 verse 31 please luke 6 31 then give us um give us proverbs 13 20 media this is for you please after this now give us proverbs 13 20 and first corinthians 15 33 i joined two of them together because they are the same thing that's supposed to be the last set of scripture but they are the same thing really in different ways proverbs 13 20 and first corinthians 15 33 let's look at luke 6 31 everyone please read one two read 
Oh, come on. Let's read like able-bodied people. One to read. Listen. This is another idea on kingdom friendship and relationships that God is saying. He's saying the same way you want people to treat you. Please listen. It says, do to them likewise. Sister, all the guys you are parading around and just playing around with and you are happy the way they are clashing and fighting themselves. The Bible says the same way you want people to treat you is the way you treat other people. I have learned as a person never to do to people what I know I will frown out if it were done to me. Now it's not easy. It's easier saying it than doing it because sometimes many things are unconscious. But you must have a determination. Never delight yourself doing things to people that you will frown out if it were done to you. We see the way some of our mothers treat the house helps in the house. Yet, that house help is somebody else's daughter. Are we together now? Yeah. We see the way some of us treat other people. You see the way we pastors treat people. Right? And then we do not want the same thing happening. The Bible says, As ye would that men do to you, I know what I want men to do. I want people to honor me and honor what I represent. I want people to trust me. I want people to find a friend in me. I want people to pay attention to the truths that I bring because I believe that they are communications of the Spirit. And I want people to believe in me and believe in the ministry. And because I want that, I will never take my mouth and be running another man's ministry. Are we together now? Yes. I'll not open my mouth and be calling pastors fake or do no, 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 no. I leave every judgment to God. I will challenge ideas, challenge ideologies that are not consistent with the word of God. But I will do to men as I would want them to do to me. I don't want any man coming and trivializing the grace of God upon my life. So I make it a point of duty to honor everyone. I don't enter a meeting and see men of God seated. And now here comes Apostle Joshua Selman. And I rubbish them and make it look like everything. Oh, Nas, Benga, Abiodun, Shahom, and Nas. All these things people are saying. You are just teaching nonsense. Now sit down. No, I don't want that done to me. And so I will not do that to anyone. It's amazing how people hate the things they do to others. They will not be able to survive one ten of the things they engineer to happen to others. For instance, you are in a relationship with a brother and maybe you were supposed to have an appointment and he could not make it. And let's say he was careless, he didn't let you know, he wasted your time. Hear what some of those bad friends say. See, show this guy. I've been telling you, show this guy. Whereas that same lady will be in a relationship and something little will happen and she will come back boiling. Listen, don't you ever do or advise people to do things that you know you will not want for yourself or for your loved ones.